everyone! Welcome to week 14 of my series Paint and Meditate, the painting challenge where I use the Color Cube by Sarah Renee Clark and Bible verses turned in from all of you to restrict my color palette and to be the inspiration behind the painting. Today's colors are magenta, ultraviolet, turquoise, mint, and light green. And this week's Bible verse Deuteronomy 10:17. Let's get painting. Here we are in Deuteronomy once again. Let's start off reading today's verse. Deuteronomy 10:17. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God, who is not partial and takes no bribe. The Lord was definitely challenging me both as an artist and through the word this week, starting with the decision between the two images that kept going back and forth in my mind for this painting. Both ideas were going to be hard to accomplish with this color scheme, but one idea was going to force me to really have to grow in the technique of shading and highlights. Not only was this latter idea going to be challenging on a technical level, but I was having a hard time thinking about how this image really worked with the passage. Naturally, I felt the Lord continually leading me in the direction of the harder one, <laughs> as every time I went to pray over the painting, that's the image that popped into my mind. So finally, I gave in and said, okay, God, let's do this. But then another decision came when choosing the background. In the vision of the painting I had, I kept seeing green, but everything in me was wrestling with that because I knew the main subjects of the painting were also going to be made with the green. In my own understanding, I was really wanting to do the purple or the mint color, but once again, I felt the Lord calling me to trust him. A common theme we see throughout the Bible. God's people wanting to do things one way and God calling them to do it another, and usually unconventional way. One path leading to disobedience and idolatry, and the other to faith and blessing. This passage is a perfect example of this, as Moses is recounting the past 40 years the Israelites had spent in the wilderness. Despite seeing the miraculous power of God delivering them from Egypt and providing for them in the desert, they still struggled to trust trust God's plan and guidance. They became fearful of entering the land of Canaan, even though God promised to be with them and give it into their hand. And you may remember how while Moses was speaking with God on Mount Sinai, the people grew impatient and built a golden calf to worship rather than the awesome power of God resting atop the mountain who had just set them free. Chapter 10 in particular is a call for them to get their hearts right with God, to remove the stubbornness and to trust and obey the Lord. Getting to verse 17, Moses is reminding the people why they can and should submit to God as their Lord, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God. Not only is there nothing too hard for him to accomplish because of his infinite power, but he also is the highest authority over all creation. He's the God of gods, the Lord of lords. Remembering all the miraculous works that took place in their deliverance from Egypt, they would hear these words and know that God was truly almighty and above the physical laws of this world. Then Moses points out that even though Israel is his chosen people, God does not show partiality or take bribes. This solidifies God's character as being just. What is good is good, and therefore God can't turn a blind eye to that which is wrong, even if by the hands of his chosen people. This is why sin separates us from God, because even in his great love for us, when we do wrong, he cannot go against his nature and brush it under the rug. His pure goodness and holiness keeps him acting in true righteousness and justice. What aspects of God's character help you to trust his lordship over your life? Share your thoughts in the comments below, along with any other Bible verses you'd like to see me painting in future videos. Being on the other side of the cross, we know that God was always moved in his compassion to make the way for us to be reunited to him, despite our sinfulness. This is why Jesus' sacrifice is so significant. All the righteous wrath and judgment for the sin of the world was paid for by Jesus, allowing us the freedom to enter yet again into the holy presence of God. Being God in the flesh, Jesus had all 
all the authority over death, taking the keys from hell, and is now seated in the heavenly places as the eternal king. As I mentioned, there were two options I was debating for this painting. And when I first read this verse, I wanted to paint Mount Sinai with the majestic cloud and lightning and fire and all the things. But God kept showing me a crown and scepter, which really had me meditating on this verse and pressing into the Lord for a deeper understanding. A true king of abundance and riches who has everything, who can bribe them? There is nothing you can add to them. A true king of goodness, who can sway their position? Their integrity will not allow them to dismiss evil. A truly all-powerful king over creation? What is too difficult for them? They have complete authority over all they have created. A true king of compassion. What could keep him from drawing near to mankind? Nothing. There is nothing in all creation that can separate us from the love of God. Jesus is the certainty of this love as he was willing to lay down his life for ours. Jesus is this king. Despite my hesitancy to the choices God was nudging me towards with this painting, I'm glad I listened, because he had so many hidden treasures for me along the way. The deeper understanding and study of this verse, and the way using green for the background challenged me even more to really think about how can I make this crown and scepter pop and feel 3D and shining. It taught me new perspectives and skills and drew me closer to him in the process. There are so many decisions put before us every day, some simple, some great, and one of the greatest being, who do we serve? Do we serve the culture? Our jobs? Our money? Do we serve the opinions of others? Are we prisoners to our own fickle understanding? To the messages drilled into our minds? Do we rely on failed systems? Look to imperfect leadership? Stand on corrupted doctrines? Or do we hold to the Ancient of Days, the unchanging one, the living God of all creation? The one not swayed by the world he has made, but who holds all things in place by his perfect laws of nature, righteousness, and love. Do we look to the King of Kings, who with all this power and authority chose to come down from his throne because of his great desire to be in a personal relationship with us? A king who cares for every detail of our lives, listening to our petitions and answering us in his wisdom. A king who sacrificially fought evil on our behalf to provide us with an eternal abundance beyond what we can perceive. His ways don't always make sense to us, and they certainly are not always easy. But a king who leads his people with perfect integrity and empathy is one that we can fully trust and worthy to be made Lord over our lives. To see the other paintings from this series and other creative videos that help cultivate closeness with God, check out these next. This has been KO, here with you to create eternal perspective. <laughs>